so um, I hope that's visible to you. It's just a, a PowerPoint uh, presentation with a little bit of information uh, as we go along. Um, CTC, as we know today, Catholic Theological College, we're, we're entering to our 50th year uh, as, a, as a college. C CTC, as it stands, is the brainchild of a, the, the fifth Archbishop of Melbourne, Cardinal Knox, who was appointed here in the wake, really, of the Second Vatican Council, the most important meeting of the Catholic Church in the 20th century, which re-articulated, re, re reset the vision and mission of the church in the, in the, in the, in the modern era in the 20th century. And Cardinal Knox was appointed to Melbourne after that council to really, to really uh, implement the council in, uh, in, in Melbourne and, and in Victoria. Sure, just said 40 minutes will do us. He'd had a... Um, He'd had a career in uh, the diplomatic corps of the Vatican, so had, had worked around the world in various places and knew a fair bit about organisation. So one of the things he was good at when he got to Melbourne was organising what was uh, pr pretty much a, a, a pre-organised, I would say, not, not disorganised, but pre-organised uh, local church into a, a set of um, agencies and operations that we still recognise today in education, in social welfare, in, in parish life, in diocesan organisation, in finance and so on. What he found when he came to Melbourne was a number of religious orders and the diocesan uh, priesthood that all ran their own seminaries and tried to staff a full seminary program of their own. But those seminaries were, were also simply for uh, people preparing for priesthood, either in the Oblate Fathers, Sil Silesian Fathers, the diocesan priesthood, and not open to lay people to study. So very much driven by the vision of the Second Vatican Council, Cardinal Knox, Archbishop Knox at the time, invited the leaders of, of the Victorian and Tasmanian dioceses and of a number of religious uh, um, orders in Victoria to collaborate together and pool resources, staffing uh, and a program to create a, a richer, fuller program that was available not just to uh, ordinands, to people studying for priesthood, but to religious and to lay baptised Catholics as well, people involved in parishes, in family life, in other ministries. And so they brought together 10 local um, uh, theologates or, 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 or seminary houses into one uh, into one organisation to share resources, to, to, um, a tip to be available to all the members of the church, ordained and lay, and also to be sensitive and, and cooperative in an ecumenical capacity, that theology, uh, religious studies is not just a Catholic endeavour, but also an ecumenical endeavour. So in late 1973, uh, Catholic Theological College was admitted to the Melbourne College of Divinity, which had been established in 1910. That's the Melbourne College of Divinity was the oldest ecumenical educational institution in the world and still continuing today as the University of Divinity. So Catholics were admitted by uh, an amendment to the Victorian Act that set up the MCD and uh, CTC was admitted and another Catholic college, well, two other Catholic colleges at the time, but Yarra Theological Union, uh, which is located in, in Box Hill and the United Faculty of Theology with the Jesuits located in Parkville. So CTC then was a gathering of the diocese of Melbourne, Hobart, Ballarat, Sale and Sandhurst, yeah, the, the Victorian and Tasmanian Catholic diocese and a number of religious uh, orders, as you see there. And these, these bodies make up the governors uh, or the or the what we call the sponsors of Catholic Theological College who federate together for the purposes in the first case of seminary training for their candidates but also to offer theological uh, studies and ministry training uh, in a broader base for the needs of the church in Victoria and Tasmania in the first case and more broadly as as that is possible. So the, the task or the goals of CTC are to promote the study and research in theology and its related disciplines in all those areas of, of biblical studies, of church history, of spirituality, of canon law, of, of ethics, of, of, of Christian thought itself, uh, of ministry, uh, of, of spiritual direction, spiritual care, all of these different subheadings that belong under that topic of theology to promote both study and research. So, so uh, introductory and ongoing grad, undergraduate and postgraduate training, but also higher level or higher degree research uh, in all those areas. 
in order to educate ministers uh, of the church, uh, both ordained and lay and and local, um, that 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 all the all the all those who are interested in taking up their place in the mission of the church. Uh, and would find study and, and training useful for that in education, in social welfare, social justice services, in family life, in parish life, in their own communities of faith and more broadly, whether or not they are Catholic. So there's no uh, faith test uh, on anybody in the University of Divinity, but certainly no, no Catholic test about CTC, although it's a Catholic sponsored and a, and, a, and a Catholic environment that people are entering into. And that, that study and research is also then for the for the purpose of, of creating that dialogue, that, that healthy interaction between the gospel and the, the society, the cultures in which we live, which is an in, increasingly uh, multicultural and pluralistic society uh, in which we live. Um, whoever's admitting, Jenny, you might just turn off the doorbell, could you, uh, as your people? That's, uh, that's a particularly annoying thing going on in the background. And to empower people. Sorry, Kevin, I have no idea how to do that. Okay, oh. okay. So, um, uh, and and to uh, and to prepare people for pastoral uh, ministry uh, in in the church. So we'll find it, uh, as members of the CTC community, students uh, of, of, of the college, you'll find people who are preparing for priesthood, people who are preparing for ministry in a whole range of people, a whole range of range of ways in their life, uh, either professionally or in their local faith community or in their family. Religious men and women uh, in vowed consecrated communities who are uh, preparing for ministries or enriching their own theological education. And also the a number of uh, men preparing for permanent or ordained diaconate uh, in the church. Uh, uh, that's that's been a, that's that's been a, a more recent development uh, since the foundation, and we have numbers of men um, moving in that direction for Melbourne and for some of the other dioceses uh, in Victoria. So as I mentioned, from its foundation, one of the goals of CTC was to study and be uh, and be theological reflective in an ec ecumenical environment, and that's been achieved through our affiliation with the Melbourne College of Divinity, which uh, in twenty in twenty twelve was established as one as Australia's first university of specialization more recently uh, recategorized as an australian university so this is a university that uh, that 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 follows all the national regulations and requirements for a normal university but rather than offering all the disciplines it specializes in one or two disciplines in our case in divinity or theology theological studies and the, 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 the University of Divinity is made up of 10 colleges. It's a collegiate university, uh, more common from the, the, the UK model of Cambridge and Oxford, a university that exists in its colleges and, and exercises its functions through a number of colleges. So every student is ordained, in, is, is, is enrolled in one or other of these 10 colleges and, and pursues their studies uh, with that home college, although students are free to pursue units and studies available in any of these uh, 10 colleges. Uh, our sister college, um, Yarra Theological College, is the other Catholic college located uh, in, in Box Hill in, in Melbourne. So it's a very rich environment. Uh, each of these colleges traditionally would have been a theology, a theology training or, or, or ministry training school for a particular religious denomination. Either Burroughs is the Salvation Army, uh, St. Ignatius uh, Coptic is clear enough. Uh, 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 as you can see there, Trinity is the, is the um, Anglican school in, in Parkville, Pilgrim, uh, the Uniting Church in Parkville and so on. The University of Divinity gathers itself around a number of what they call graduate attributes or, or, or key purposes, uh, which, which are available on the website and in the handbook. The, the aims there to, to, to learn, to articulate, to communicate, to engage and to serve, grounded in the various Christian traditions that make up our, our denominations, but putting those traditions uh, and, the, and learning the skills uh, of, of working responsibly with Christian texts and traditions to enter into uh, the, the, the conversations of the current 
climate, the current culture, and to make a contribution to the service of the, the, the common good and the development of the human person within, within our own uh, culture, uh, uh, respecting our own traditions and being open to, 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 to engagement and, and enrichment through meeting with other traditions, both Christian and, uh, and, 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 other, and other traditions. Some of you might visit uh, East Melbourne to visit the Mannix Library and a terrific facility uh, and, and to meet the lecturers and so on. The building itself is a, is a lovely blending of the, uh, of, of the old and the new. So it was the original Parade College. Uh, we just celebrated its 100th year in the last couple of years. Uh, Bluestone Building established by the Christian Brothers in, in East Melbourne, which then closed uh, at, um, after a period of time and was empty for some 10 years or so. And then in the late 1990s, uh, the Archbishop of the time, Cardinal Pell, relocated Catholic Theological College from uh, beside Monash University in North Clayton into East Melbourne and Corpus Christi College, the sister college, the seminary from Clayton into uh, Carlton. And so that blending of new and old architecture has been prize winning and also uh, full of full of interesting visual and uh, and symbolic things for you to, to look at when you when you when you look when you visit the place. One thing to notice as you look up into skylights and 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 stairwells and various things is is there a current uh, ichthus or fish theme. The Greek word for fish is ichthus, which in Christian iconography is an anagram for um, uh, for Jesus himself. So here we are preparing for study at CTC. You've all come for some reason. Maybe you've been pushed into it by a principal who says, if you don't get accredited this year, you'll be in trouble. Maybe you just, you've been wanting to do this for years and, and the COVID disruption has created a space in your life. Uh, maybe, maybe you're not quite sure what you put your hand up for, but you're thinking about it. Uh, each of there's a reason. And that reason is, is a blessed thing. You know, the Holy Spirit moves in our lives and, uh, uh, you know, when the timing is right and when our, our spirit's ready to work too, we, we often put our hands up to do something. And so something has brought you to this moment or you're, you're, you're seeking a particular outcome for, for your engagement. So, so it's important to honour that and to acknowledge it. You bring also your own life story, your own religious or non-religious experience, your own position on a, on a gamut of faith and spirituality views and, and perspectives, uh, some good and some perhaps difficult or problematic experiences with the church, uh, with religious traditions in general. You, we all bring all of that into, into our study uh, programs. Some of you might be straight from school, others of you might have picked up a book for 30 years. So there'll be, um, there'll be a whole range of feelings probably among us about starting academic study. How do you write an essay? What's required? It's all online. It's all on computers these days. I've, um, how, do I, how do I use the digital resources of the library? All of these questions uh, might, might, might be there uh, for you. But the key thing is, I suppose, most of us approach study for, for two reasons. One is there's often a practical starting point. We need, we need something either for professional life or for the next stage of our lives. But then through that, there's that personal enrichment or the, the enlarging of our own perspectives and our own heart by, by uh, engaging with the traditions, the, 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 the discipline content uh, that, that we engage with. If a thing is worth studying, and theology is certainly worth studying, it taps into what's deeply human and, and broadens our, our experience of being human by our engagement with the texts and traditions that, uh, that we meet in that discipline of study. So let me introduce you to some people, and I can probably do that in another way by going to our website so you can find them yourself if you need to do that. So I'm just going to whip us over to our website here. Where's CTC? Uh, Where's that PowerPoint? Safari. There we go. Get rid of that. Oh, that didn't work, did it? Oh, I'm out of practice. Um, C 
So I'm just going in here again. So I can show you this might be useful to navigate you towards this. So this is our website here, ctc.edu.au. You've probably been here to find this. If you go across to the top uh, horizontal menu to the about tab and take us down to CTC staff. And here you'll find a list of the admin staff and also the lecturing staff in each department, uh, which has some interesting information about people. But, but in, in the, in, in on, online with us tonight, here's myself. Catherine's still with us, although she had to go to another thing, not, not no longer with us. Um, Father Simon Waite, our academic dean, uh, is with us here. Uh, Simon uh, um, will introduce himself, I think, but has overall um, uh, oversight of all the academic uh, operations of the college and timetable, and also provides course advice for undergraduate students, so the diploma and bachelor's level um, studies. Father Phil Gleeson is the postgraduate coordinator, so Phil will be working with people who are enrolled in graduate diplomas, graduate uh, certificates, master's degrees, and so on. Father Max Vidola is the Associate, Associate Dean for Research, so Max will be working with you if you're interested in um, a master's degree by research or a PhD, and I'm sure most of you are interested in, in the PhD uh, down the track, so we look forward to signing up for that uh, when you finish your, your current course. And you'll also find some of the uh, admin team online. So John introduced us tonight. John is a registrar who coordinates the Academic Records Office and matters to do with student administration. Uh, Rose Sultana and Jenny Delahunt are our student records officers, and Jenny's here with us, I can see, online tonight. And Jude is with us. Jude's our learning support uh, coordinator and also the, um, uh, the, the, the learning management system uh, uh, officer for our college. And Jude will speak with us uh, shortly to give us some information there. And you'll meet, you'll meet other people as we go along. So you'll find, you'll find us all there on that CTC staff page. So um, I'll, I'll get out of the way and hand over to the people who know what, what's going on in the college. And again, just to welcome you on, on board. We're very pleased to have you with us. We hope, we hope and with a fair bit of confidence that you'll find your engagement with CTC to be both personally enriching, but also professionally useful, uh, that you'll, you'll learn a few things and also put together a set of resources uh, and skills that will be useful to you in whatever um, whatever uh, application you're taking them into in your life. So thanks. Thanks, John. John, you're on mute if you're talking, or shall I just hand over to you? Hello. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, thanks, Kevin. Um, I'll hand you straight over to Reverend Dr. Simon Waite, the Academic Dean. Thank you, Simon. Thanks so much, John. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Uh, it's good to be with you uh, this evening. Um, what, even though Zoom doesn't allow us to sort of all see each other on exactly the same screen, we get a sense of community here. And I think that's one of the beauty, beautiful things about CTC, unlike a large university where you can sometimes get lost in the crowd with the big numbers and everything. Uh, here at CTC, you're very much an individual uh, and we try to personalise things. So we work things out that's best for you. Um, uh, you're not uh, sort of uh, just a number, you're a real um, person that we want to engage with and to enhance your learning. So let me share my screen and uh, oops, I'll just make sure I get the right one. Okay, I trust you can all see that. Good. Um, so some academic information about uh, uh, how things work at the college regarding your studies. Um, the um, the first thing to note is that uh, the if I can get this thing to work, yes, uh, is that learning is a is a journey. Uh, there's uh, from from entry uh, from when you begin uh, your study journey here at CTC all the way through to graduation, and uh, we trust and pray uh, that will might be multiple graduations, whereas you go through um, various uh, studies from undergraduate all the way through to um, uh, other degrees, uh, ma masters, um, postgraduate degrees, and, and even doctorates. 
all those are possible here at CDC. So there's uh, no limit to uh, what's possible to do here in theology. In the, as uh, Father Kevin mentioned, there's the, um, the graduate attributes. Um, and so the aim is that by the end of your study, uh, by the time you graduate, uh, that these uh, things will be a hallmark of uh, what you've learnt. Uh, there'll be a hallmark of, uh, in a sense, uh, what you can bring to society and so forth. Um, those are available uh, here, but also they're available on the University of Divinity website as well. I won't spend too much time on those since uh, they've already been covered. So getting down to some of the nitty gritty, um, attendance. Um, attendance is very much uh, a uh, key uh, here because uh, the uh, degrees, um, Bachelor of Theology, the diplomas and so forth are very much taught degrees. Um, so the um, very much uh, being present at lectures because the lectures are quite intimate. Um, it's not like, you know, the huge lecture halls of several uh, hundred people and then where in large universities where tutorials are compulsory here, um, lectures are important. And uh, because of the primary place of learning, where you also engage in seminar material and, and a whole range of other things. And so if you're missing, um, then the lecturers will follow up uh, with you. To, and if you're missing twice, then they'll uh, let me know so that I can then follow up with you to see, you know, if there's some difficulty, some way we can assist you, something uh, that uh, perhaps we need to know that uh, is uh, causing some difficulty in your learning uh, journey. So that, that's the first thing to know is that uh, um, even if you're online, uh, it's important to, uh, uh, to be there or to um, at least let your lecturer know sort of why you can't make it. Um, that's uh, we're very helpful for us. So if you are unwell, if there's some difficulty, let your lecturer know and uh, they'll um, be able to uh, uh, assist you in some way. Oftentimes there's material on our learning management system, which you'll learn more about with uh, uh, Jude, uh, which can then, even if you can't make it to class because you're sick or perhaps uh, COVID reasons, then you'll be able to um, catch up with a lot of stuff, perhaps potentially on ARC. So uh, your lecturers will help you and uh, assist you in that way. Other assistance which is available is um, there's uh, Jude Caspers, uh, which will, who will talk later, who's our learning support coordinator. He's able to uh, uh, draw on a range of resources to be able to assist you in your studies if you have particular needs. Um, and uh, the uh, and he also coordinates the, the tutors uh, for uh, those who have needs in this area. So the um, uh, the aim is to support you in your learning journey as much as possible so that you can achieve a good outcome. Now, academic integrity, what's this all about? This is about uh, basically uh, academic integrity is about, I think in the long run, basically it's about honesty. Um, and I think uh, that's a, a good place to start. It's about um, Basically, when you present work, uh, you're presented in essays, you're presented in exams and so forth, um, that it is your own work. Um, and anything that you draw from, uh, like in an essay uh, from another source, you'll then acknowledge that in a reference. So uh, it's transparent. So you're being transparent about what you're presenting for assessment. And uh, that's basically uh, the bottom line of what in integrity is about. Um, the the word you can oftentimes uh, find is, is plagiarism, which I'll get to in a moment. But uh, this uh, academic integrity is about being um, truly honest in what you're presenting. And I think that's, uh, that's an easy way to think of it. So, so learning, uh, as you can see there, is about doing your own work and acknowledging any other source that you've used. Um, and you see there the, um, the declaration that you make. In a sense, it's automatic in the way you um, submit material. Uh, the way you'll submit some material will be through the online learning management system called ARC. And, uh, and then within that system, uh, there is a, a device called Turnitin, uh, which then accepts the essays and then uh, uh, gives you some assistance in saying, well, uh, have I remembered to reference everything? Um, Jude will uh, talk a bit more about uh, ARC in, in a little while, 
but uh, suffice to say, with the uh, Turn It In system, it's able to pick up if you have put something in your essay, but you haven't referenced it properly. So if you submit your essays a little bit early, or you can use the portal, there is a portal within ARC where you can submit essays in a dummy way, so you can see, okay, have I referenced everything properly? Uh, that will then show up that whether you have missed something, and then you can correct that, uh, so that when you actually submit the essay, uh, you're being um, uh, fully, uh, uh, transparent in, in what you uh, are presenting that uh, everything is referenced correctly. So we have their def definition of plagiarism. Um, so it's uh, just to go through it, it's um, basically it's used by one person of another person's work and putting it forward as, as, the, as your own work when it's really not. Um, so the way to avoid that is by proper attribution. Uh, the attribution is important because then that shows that, yes, I'm drawing from other people. Um, you know, we all sit on the sh shoulders of giants, as it were, because uh, um, none of us are sort of the, uh, the end, you know, the, the whole thing. So we're all learning from each other. We all rely upon each other. And in that uh, process, um, we draw from each other. And as long as we do that in a transparent way, in a way which uh, attributes um, where we got material from, then everything is fine. Recycling is, uh, uh, you might not, it's not uh, when you put stuff in the yellow bin, uh, it's uh, rather when you uh, um, take some work you've submitted to say one unit or uh, another uh, degree and you put it back in as a uh, submission for another unit uh, or another degree. So in other words, it's reusing material because the whole part of the learning journey is uh, to do things afresh. Um, if you're just sort of recycling stuff, then you're not actually learning anything. So the journey of learning is important that uh, we don't recycle things. Okay, so uh, that's um, sort of, in a sense, uh, the um, uh, academic integrity part. Another important aspect is to know the style guide. Uh, in the past, we used to have a CTC style guide. Uh, now we have a, um, university-wide one. What is the style guide? The style guide is a guideline for how you should set out your essays and the way in which you should may, uh, reference the material that you're using from other sources. And that's in uh, CDC, that's normally done through footnoting. Um, so uh, Annalise, uh, who's here, well, she'll give you some more information about uh, the where you can find the style guide on the uh, 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 university website and particularly the Library Hub website uh, and she'll talk with you more about that in a while. You know every every university has their own style guide and uh, and the University of Divinity is no different in that regard. Uh, a lot of it will be similar to other universities but some will be different. Now uh, when something happens uh, in your life and and things do happen which we're not anticipating, um, then uh, we have provision for that. Um, if something comes up and uh, you can't get your essay on time because there's something that has uh, interrupted your study for one reason or another, uh, there is uh, the possibility of a lecturer's extension. Um, and there are forms for that. As you can see there, the forms are available on the CTC website. Oops, what happened there? I didn't expect. As you can see, things can happen in an unexpected way. Uh, <laughs> whoops, that was not, hang on. I might just cancel out of that. And let me just go back to it and get it right. Okay, from current slide. Technology is wonderful, uh, but it doesn't always do what it's told. Do you ever find that? <laughs> I think we all find that, don't we? All righty. So uh, moving on from the star guide, which you'll hear more about from Annalise. Um, there we go, we've on to the extensions. So uh, the, and if there's something which is more serious, which uh, is a, needs a longer extension, then you can apply to me for a Dean's extension. Okay. Um, the, um, and the forms are available on the CTC website at that uh, URL there. Basically, if you're looking 
at the CTC website, the main page, you go to studying at CTC assessment and forms. Okay. If you can't find it, um, you can always just uh, ask your lecturer or um, uh, anybody in the college and they'll be able to assist you with that. Okay. Uh, now. That's it. Aside from extensions, there is also the possibility of special grading consideration where there might be some particular um, very difficult circumstance. Uh, let me just give you an example. Say someone's parent has died overseas, they've had to go back um, to attend the funeral and they can't get back to Australia easily because of COVID. Um, then we can make much more provision than just the four weeks to be able to um, assist you in those very difficult and unforeseen circumstances. So there's always a way to do that. And that's done through the special grading consideration. It's also possible if you have a um, need for a special support plan, which can be um, uh, produced for you uh, to um, modify some of the assessment. I'll talk about that in, in a little bit more in a moment. But uh, the special grading consideration allows, as you can see there, additional time aside from the extensions, but also a change of assessment type um, and extensions beyond the normal, even into the following year if needed. Okay. The student support plan is uh, if, uh, for instance, on your enrollment form where you tick the box, um, yes, I do have something that might impinge on my study uh, that uh, is uh, some disability, mental illness, physical incapacity, learning disability, or you know, vision problem, um, hearing problem, uh, then we can write up a student support plan for you before, even before you start study to be able to uh, um, assist then uh, the college to know how we can assist you best, um, how we can make it possible to adjust things if necessary so that you can um, get the most out of your study. Um, uh, for instance, you know, if uh, it's, uh, if you're having difficulty with um, uh, sight, then we can, uh, uh, make possible, for instance, recording of um, lectures and so forth, if need be, things like that, so that uh, things that can, uh, can assist you. So that, that can be done beforehand before you start a uh, class. Um, and it can be done down the track as well. Um, <coughs> okay. Um, there's a good lot of student information on the CTC website, uh, which uh, Father Kevin has already shown you the, the website there. Um, you'll find uh, a good lot of information, even though you're already students now, you'll find a good lot of information in this prospectus, which is on the main website under prospectus. It's, it has quite a good lot of information, which is even valuable as you're already students and have access to everything with ARC. It has some very helpful information there. So um, I would direct you to that and, uh, and to the whole gamut of what's available on, on the website. Uh, you'll find particularly on the right-hand side under timetables, um, you'll have the uh, schedule for the, um, the classes and, uh, and you should know what classes you're in, but you might not know what day and time. Um, so that timetable will tell you when it is and the day and time. When you, if it's at college, if it's not online, then you'll find that when you come to college on the notice board outside the Knox Theatre, there'll be a list of the, um, uh, the classes and which room they'll be in. And uh, so each room has a name, uh, very, they don't have num. well, some, they have numbers as well, but they have names so that you, you should be listed by name. Um, as we were talking about Cardinal Knox earlier, we have the Knox room and that's actually our biggest lecture theatre. One thing you might uh, not be aware of, just to make sure that you're okay with this, is that on the timetable and also when you're enrolling, uh, you would have uh, seen that your classes were either face-to-face which the acronym for that is F2F, um, or you might be online. And there's two forms of online learning. There's online synchronous or OLS and online asynchronous, OLA. What do they mean? Online synchronous means that the classes are on at a certain time and you have to be online at that time, okay? Uh, so that's online synchronous. In other words, it synchronizes with what the college is presenting. Um, online asynchronous means that um, you can go online at any time to uh, do the task uh, for uh, your learning. So uh, that uh, means that then it has more flexibility. Now, most of your, the classes that you'll find that are online this semester, uh, online synchronous 
or online synchronous with an asynchronous component or online face-to-face -face with an asynchronous component. So those are the options that are available this semester. Um, but that's something just to be aware of so that you're not thinking um, that I can do this at any time when actually you need to be at class at a particular time, even if you're learning online. So uh, that's, uh, I think, enough for me. And I'll hand you over now to uh, Jude Caspers. I'll, thank, I'll hand you back to John who will uh, pass you on. Anyway, welcome here to CTC and look forward to seeing you, seeing you around. Thanks very much, Simon. Uh, oh, we're back live, good. Okay, so I'll now hand you over to the Learning Support Coordinator, um, Mr. Jude Caspers. Take it away, Jude. Thank you, John. I'm just going to share the screen. Hopefully that's on for everybody to see. I've got a few major headings to, to cover. First of all is the academic writing course that I'll be running in week three. And um, it really is for you to question if you need some help in academic writing, perhaps you haven't written an essay for quite a while, or perhaps you never have before a tertiary level, or you need some help with study organization. This might be the course for you. It's free of charge and college offers this. Uh, I'll be running this from week three onwards. And you can see the content there and other Annalise or one of her colleagues in the library will be there helping me in the first session and we'll do a bit of an online library tour and then we'll cover some really essential things. So you don't have to attend all classes, or, but we do, uh, I would strongly recommend that you do. But if you can't attend all, I would suggest number three, the art of essay planning is probably the most important. Uh, that's, that's one which uh, I think people get the most benefit from, but uh, I do really want to encourage you to think of all. So um, it you do need to register for this, uh, it's online. The flyer will go out tomorrow, I'm hoping, uh, if I have all your email addresses and you need to register by um, Friday of week two, just so I can organize uh, what I'm doing, okay? As Simon mentioned, we also run a tutoring service here at CTC. And to get onto that tutoring service, you just email me, it's my email address there. Uh, and these are our faithful tutors are there to assist you and uh, give you assistance. And we have other support as well. We have the peer liaison officers. So we have uh, two students, Michael and Ayanti, who are there to assist you with things which are not really academic, but other issues that may come up. And of course, Lisa, who's in the library and myself. So we've all been trained uh, by the Human Rights Commission to look at um, how to help students if they may have uh, harassment, discrimination or other grievances. Um, just email me if you need some more information on that. And their email addresses will be on the, uh, in the corridor as well on the notice board. So you can email one of them direct too if you'd like to speak to one of them personally. Now, there's a few things we need to get our head around, a few terms that you may not be used to. One is paradigm. What's paradigm you might think? Well, it's the education management system. It's where your enrollment was entered. So when the dean or the, uh, the academic dean or the postgraduate dean um, met you and pro, you know, approved your enrollment, uh, they would have passed it on to Rose or Jenny in our academic records office, who faithfully enter it into our paradigm system. And once that's processed, you are uh, officially a, a member of the college as you're in the system. And uh, you can actually access that yourself. And to site where you can um, view your own enrollment details, confirm everything is correct, and also assess your results. So at the end of each semester, John will send out a memo to all students to say results have now been posted and you can access them. And he'll also give you instructions on how to access that. But that's for you and it's quite confidential for you to access your own uh, entry there. The good thing is the login for ARC, for the Library Hub, and Paradigm are all the same, which I'll explain. So you only need to remember one password, try to keep it easy. Uh, and when you go into Paradigm, that's how you're, um, you probably won't have a little mortar board there because you may not have graduated yet. Uh, this is one of our fictitious students in the system, uh, but that's how it will look. And you can go further down and you can see a sample here of how the enrollments would look at. You can see the unit codes there, the units, course, 
and you know you can enroll in other colleges at the university as well and it tells you when you have completed the course and at results time you can rejoice that you've got high distinction that's what we aim for don't we the other thing to get to know is arc okay my favorite word is the arc we're all on board on the arc now and it's really the online learning management system. Now, every university in the world, I think, would now have an online learning management system. And a lot of secondary schools have it as well. So we're on board. We're one happy family on the arc. Sometimes it gets a bit rocky, like today. We lost access for a little while, but that can happen. But we always get back on board and start, a flo start floating again, don't we? We have faith that the arc will always float <laughs> after uh, a few storms. OK, so we're, I'm welcoming you aboard. Uh, you really do need to get onto it soon because once you get all that wonderful content from your lectures, you will be taking all that in. So I um, suggest strongly encourage you to start looking at ARC from tonight onwards. Um, you've got access um, and we're going to talk about how we can keep our heads above water. We don't want to fall off the ARC, do we? So the secret is the success with ARC and success with you know, study at the University of Divinity is to start exploring ARC as soon as you can. Get confident with it. And here's some essential knowledge to keep you afloat. You know, you don't want to, I suppose, have an assignment to do in week five or week six and think, oh, I haven't accessed art yet. That would be not very good. So it's a great cause of celebration amongst the academic records office. I know when the new art guide is published, and it's published, just finished today, the new version. So that'll go out to you uh, tomorrow as well by email. I'll send you a memo and really everything I'm talking about now I'm just going to skim through ARC, just take you through a bit of a tour, but you, that'll be inside this booklet that you will receive. So ARC is the University of Divinity Online Learning Management System, it's uni-wide, and the basic thing to remember or to keep in mind is that for each unit you enrolled, there are two corresponding websites. I know it's a surprise, it's two, not one. I know it would make life a lot simpler if it's only one, but we are a dynamic university. We have at least two for each uh, unit we have. And in this ARC unit, you will see readings, lectures, video links, and other resources that your lecturers will leave for you. Lots of resources. Plus, of course, portals through which assignments are lodged online. And these are then run through the Turnbin database that Simon mentioned. And that runs a similarity check for everything you have written. It goes to uh, the United States. I believe there's 100 computers there churning away. And it looks like uh, it compares everything you've written on the to what's in the in, on the internet and what's been published before and it'll give you a similarity rating so that's the that's the uh turn it in is what it's called but that's the code the little symbol i should say is what you need to look for if you've ever seen that in, on your arc page that means you click that and that takes you a link to submit your assignment how do i access arc well, first of all, there's a website address. This will be in your booklet as well. But I, I would really suggest strongly you don't just rely on that bookmark it. I've had lots of students who rely on either the CTC website or the University of Divinity website. One of them goes down and then they don't know how to access art. So bookmark it so you have a direct link just by clicking that star there. And then you'll get a nice, neat little bookmark there that you can click and it takes you straight to art. How do I log in? Well, you have a, a password and a username already created for you. You may not know that exists. It's the, the username is the email address you gave uh, at enrollment. Example, James Brown at inet.org. That is your username. And be careful, you may be used to using uppercase in your emails when you send emails out, but ARC is a bit fussy. So it has to all be in lower case. I'm happy to get through. Your password is your day and month of birth, written in that form, plus the last three digits of your University of Divinity student ID, which I believe will have been sent to you. If you haven't received that yet, um, just contact either John, Jenny or Rose. So example, if your date of birth was 1st of December 1970, your student number would be 20131254321. we pretend. And the password would be 01 forward slash 12 and then 543. Just remember this forward slash. It's amazing how many students 
email me, dude, I can't get in. And they've forgotten that slash or they've done a backslash uh, or whatever. So that forward slash is very important. And there's only one between the, the day and the month. Okay. Again, that'll be on your booklet. Uh, when you go into art for the first time, it'll take you through a nice little tour. I would suggest you take that tour if you haven't experienced art before. Uh, you won't see Noah on art, but we imagine he's always there. He's got an influence uh, wherever we are. This is the dashboard. And where do you go if you get lost in art? You go back home. You go to your dashboard. So always look for a dashboard. If ever you, you don't know where you are, click that. and It'll take you back to a safe place. You'll see that there's an automatic link to the library resources. Uh, you can click that any time. You can go in and out from art to the library hub. Another important thing is the unit overview. It's really important. I don't know why it's so small on the screen, but it is very, very important. That lists all your units that you are enrolled in. It's a bigger version. And you need to look at this little filter button. And that gives you a set of three or four folders where your units will be divided. And they could either be all in progress, which means present, that means your classes have started, it's in progress. Future, that means uh, say now it's future because we haven't yet started yet, that's where your units might be, and past for previous semesters. And start is your favorites folder. So what I suggest strongly, especially after you've been here for a little while, you'll find your units tend to move. They're, they're, They'll appear when they do get created, they'll be in future and then they'll move to in progress uh, at a particular time and students and lecturers both say, I can't find them because uh, they've moved. They move uh, uh, because of different time scales. So I would suggest you go for those little three dots and you create your favorites. And all you need to do is start this course and then you click start from now on. There you are. And that will be your favorites and all your units you want to see that particular semester will be there for you. As I said before, there are two websites for each unit. So here's an example, New Testament Greek A. That is the parent unit. And it's got no code, there's no code in that. And look, I used to be, apologies for this, <laughs> but I used to be a primary teacher in a previous life. So I like to keep things simple. So meta starts with M and so does mother. So that's how you remember what a meta unit is. A meta unit is the mother or parent unit. That means everyone in that class can all access the meta unit, okay? The other unit is the child unit. And the child unit, notice child starts with C and so does the word code. So if you see a code, that's the child unit, okay? And the reason why we have that is because we have a very dynamic way of teaching at the University of Divinity. We might have uh, postgraduates like the student is here because they're level nine. We know that's a, a postgraduate, perhaps doing uh, their masters. Or we might have someone with an AL, exactly the same code, but might have a one there or a two which means they're an undergraduate, but they're all in the same class. And we don't want them doing each other's assignments, do we? We don't want an undergraduate doing a, a postgraduate level essay. So that's why we have different child units. So you'll only be able to access your particular child unit and everyone in the class will uh, be able to access the meta unit. This is an example of your dashboard. If you've been very busy and you're enrolled in lots of units, there's an example of a child unit, prophetic literature. And we know it's a child unit because it's got the code. That's the BA stands for field. Three is the level. And the C stands for CTC. So if you do another unit in another college, it'll have an S or a T or something like that. And very important, you have the right year. And this last digit stands for the month that your unit starts, it's February. Okay, if you do one, uh, when you do your second semester units, they'll have seven there. And this is the corresponding Meta unit. Notice it doesn't appear together. That's why it's very important to star things. Okay. But they are, they do make the same unit. This is just an example. I'm just showing you what a meta unit could look like. Lectures try to make it, them look very attractive and engaging. This one's got a recording here as well. Lots of resources, maps, things like that. You'll notice this nice little jigsaw puzzle piece. That's if you're doing an online class, that's where you go to your Zoom classes. We use Zoom, we uh, use our online classes through ARC. We don't uh, like to go outside. We don't want to be Zoom bombed to be by uh, inappropriate people. So that's why we go to ARC. Uh, you, once you're in ARC, you are a secure place and that's where your Zoom classes will take you to. Uh, lots of lecturers use the news forum and they can send news and information and you can always track what your lecturer has given you uh, by going back to news form, you can see a, 
um, a, a record of all the statements that's been given. Um, what else can I say? Let's talk about the weekly sessions. And this is the child unit. You know, it's a child unit, it's got a code and you can see lots of different things there, but mainly the child unit only has the assessment, you know, that's assessment, it's got a turn it in tool. It might have an online forum, not all child units have that, but a very important inclusion for the child unit is, yes, the assessments, that's where all your assessments will be, an online forum, but the unit guide, okay? And that should be there for you when you start next week. And probably if you do have access, you probably won't see it as yet. Um, it's gotta be improved by the academic dean, but if you go through unit guide, it takes you to another place and that's got lots of information uh, where the unit was officially approved. And it's got living outcomes for that particular unit. It's got assessment details. Resources or bibliography. Lots of things, okay? So really important that you uh, click that and have a look before. I'm sure your lecture will take you through that anywhere in the first class. Just wanna go through back to the assessments. I've gone, notice I've gone back to um, the unit, the child unit, and now I'm looking at the turn it in assessment piece. Just want to show you something about similarity scores and how they work, okay? So this is, uh, an example, assessment task of 4,000 words. This is what the lecturer sees. This is all the students and, and when they have submitted their assignments, okay? It says the date and the time. Uh, red means they've gone over, over time, okay? But um, some talked about what happens when, you look, when your assignments are late. But this is the similarity. As soon as you, or about 15 minutes actually, after turning this had a, had a chance to review your assignment, it'll give you a color bar uh, and, or a temperature scale, I suppose, and a percentage. That's a, the similarity it's found. It's very rare to get a zero, very rare indeed. And you'll notice that the colors, these colors are quite cool. Blues and greens we like to see. Okay, uh, yellows we don't like to see that much and definitely we don't like to see reds. Oranges or reds are, are not good, okay? But as Simon mentioned before too, it is really good to Submit early, you've got a practice portal which I'll show you where that is. So it's not in the main units and you can, it's not, it's not just a, um, I suppose a penalty system. It's a, a system to uh, really, it's a teaching tool for you to say, oh, I've, I've got my assignment already. I just want to sit, test it on the similarity score. I'll submit it. And then you get this rating and you can see, oh, the things will be highlighted and you forgot to um, paraphrase the statement that, that you quoted from your favorite author. So it'll just go back and you can just re rephrase that before your lecturer gets uh, uh, his or her eyes on that assignment, okay? Or you might find other things that are highlighted. So it's a really good check system for you. Just note though, that we don't just look at those scores, those similarity scores. This is the actual grades the students got. And you can see they don't have much relevance to that. So I'm gonna warn you, a lot of students start panicking. Um, we don't strictly go by numbers. We look at the temperatures mainly, but for some reason, um, some, some names, your own name, perhaps the lecturer's name will get highlighted as well. And that gets counted in the similarity score. So it's a very sensitive tool. And it's a great frustration, even when you have referenced everything well, it's in your footnotes, even they might be highlighted as well. So that'll be counted, that similarity. So don't ever go just by the score, look into it and you can analyze what has actually been highlighted by clicking it. And I'll just show how you can access that. Now, uh, the way to do it, I'm just gonna show you where the practice portals are. On your dashboard, every student is actually enrolled in another unit called the CT student resource that I've created for you. And this is how it looks. And these are the practice portals. There's actually a C practice portal now. And that's where you can load up your assignments, dummy assignments. You can do a letter to your mom if you like to test it out and see how it works and it'll give you a similarity scale. And you just go through the process of how to submit an assignment. And there it is there, there's instructions on how to upload my assignment um, and how do I review similarity items is there as well. The ARC student guides I'm gonna send you will always be there if you lose it. There's an online practice link to get to Zoom classes as well. And this is an important thing I know that Annalise will actually show you, but this is the link to it, uh, the University of Divinity style guide that we mentioned before, okay. Now, underneath the main header section, we call this the header section, are some really important sections as well in CTC student resources. 
and one is academic forms. Okay, let's look at that. Simon mentioned the lecturer's extension form and the dean's extension form that's there, uh, special grading considerations. They're all there for you uh, in readiness for you to use. The next section, academic resources, just an example of things that are there. That take you directly to the timetables. So that's really handy. Okay, how do I present my assignments? Sample cover page, lots of uh, important information there. And we're putting more and more information there. Jenny and I and John are putting that in as we go. Okay, so you'll see more and more information coming in. Uh, my academic writing course will be there as well. So you can see resources that I post there and library resources as well. Okay, so library news comes up quite often, lots of good information. And we also have uh, this orientation session will also be recorded and that'll be in here. And there's also a student support section. So to conclude by ARC, when can I get on? Each unit goes live to students seven days prior to first class. So you, get, you actually have access now, um, but you may not be able to see your unit because we give lectures some time to set up the, all their resources. So that's why it may be hidden from students. So it's always hidden from students seven days prior to the first class, okay? Where can I get help? We're always here to help you. Uh, this is where I am. If you just imagine this is the courtyard, if you come to see CPC campus, there's a reception room where Dee and Martin, their friendly faces are there, there's a staircase, and I am here directly through these class doors. And my next door neighbor, Chris, if I'm not available, uh, Chris will be there as well as the next office, but much better just to email me anytime. And you'll find I respond to emails at all times of night. <laughs> Some of you are very surprised by times I respond to emails, especially on the weekends when students get a bit anxious about submitting assignments and things don't work. Uh, I'll be there for you most of the time. So I will respond. I, I think I respond pretty quickly. And that's it. So I um, hope that's helpful. Any questions about that? Just very quick questions. Okay, if not, please uh, feel free to email me. You'll get that, you'll get my email address uh, very soon. It's just learning support at cpc.edu.au. Uh, one word. Uh, Jude, um, I, have, here to help. I have a quick question. I'm sorry. Julian, how are you? Good, I'm on the screen. Hey, just quickly, uh, I didn't quite grasp what you meant by the password. Um, I haven't, you, you mentioned the birth date and the um, and your student number. Is that yes. a requirement or any password will do? Uh, no, so what happens is the system creates a password for you as soon as the academic records oh. office creates your enrollment. That's your, your automatic one. You're more than uh, free to change it to anything you like, but that's your initial one just to get into ARC and it'll show you how to change as well. Does that answer your question, Julian? It's just an automatically created one for you. To get it into. does, thank you. Sure, any other questions? Okay, I'll hand you back to John. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thanks, Jude. Um, that was great. Um, I, I am very impressed with uh, everyone's behaviour. All the uh, all the microphones are off and everything. And everyone's very quiet. Um, if you do have a question um, and you like using and and you think people might be others might be interested in, please feel free to use the chat and uh, and and we'll make note of. We'll make note of the questions and try to answer them in the uh, session if we can. Um, uh, the other thing is that uh, Jude has um, recommended that you get onto ARC from tonight or tomorrow. Um, unfortunately, for some people, that won't work because their detail, their, their units are not actually keyed into the system yet. So uh, if just try by all means, but if you don't get in, don't panic. Um, if, you if you're not in by Friday, by all means, give us a call, but um, we're just a bit behind with the keying at the moment. Um, so now I'd like to introduce you to uh, our librarian, Annalise Day, who's gonna talk to you about the library. Thanks, Annalise. Thanks, John. Hi, everyone. Um, obviously, you've all been overwhelmed with a lot of information, so I'll try and keep it short and sweet for you. Um, I'm the Information Services Librarian at Mannix, and Mannix Library is located upstairs at CTC. So when you come in, just pop upstairs and um, come say hello. Uh, now I'm going to join the chorus that we all know. Let me share my screen. <laughs> um, all right, let's go. So I'll give you a little introduction to um, the Library Hub. 
that we have, which is the website is library.divinity.edu.au. And don't worry if you don't remember everything, there'll be emails sent to you. So everything will be in your inbox at some point soon. Um, but it's all over the CTC website, so you'll be fine. Um, so yeah, really quickly, this is, this is where you're gonna be coming to to get all of your online resources. It's been a very handy tool over lockdown, obviously, because we've got eBooks aplenty, um, so you can access everything, pretty much no worries. Um, so a little bit about what's on the Library Hub homepage here. So we've got a bit of information about the other libraries um, that we uh, connected to the uh, university. So Maddox Library is, is CTC's library, obviously, but we have you know, others that you can pop in and visit and borrow from. Um, and there's a little bit of history about the Library Hub as well, but I won't bore you with that at the moment. You can come to another library session if you want to hear that. Um, under the Find and Access, menu we have the list of databases that we have available on the library hub um, you can search through journals and the repository and um, other things like that the other thing here that is important is the guides um, so as both simon and jude mentioned before the style guide is here so that's the university style guide um, which will be very useful for your referencing it'll give you all the little hints and tips, there's a few examples. Um, so take a look through that, um, get used to it. There is a page of FAQs, but that takes you to the Chicago Manual of Style. Um, so if there's any little nitty gritty things, a lot of people have asked questions and it goes to the Chicago Manual of Style, which is what the university sort of works around. Um, all right, back to the hub. Let me see what else. Other guides that are very useful um, would be the Library Hub Guide. It is your um, one-stop shop, basically, to understand how to use the Library Hub. I mean, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm telling you how to use it. But this will be, if you need to learn or if you want to just sort of get your head around a few ideas, there are videos, um, video orientations of how to use the Library Hub. Um, and there's you know, a list of FAQs. Um, a lot of it is how to log in. Um, and yeah, how to use eBooks and, and just the like. So by all means, take a look at the Library Hub Guide if you are getting lost at all. And also all the information that I go through is on here. Um, there's a little orientation button as well. So you can pop onto that if that is something you wanna look at. Um, all right, let me just go into here. This will be prettier than what I'm doing. And it loads. And my internet's being very slow, that's okay. <laughs> Don't mind me. Okay, so on the Library Hub, obviously you're wanting to make a search for books or articles or resources that you can use in your assignments. So simple thing is to just pop in a um, keyword or an author or um, a title of a book that you're after and you'll get a list of results um, that pop up. So my word of advice is if you're wanting to find something that is a print book that is in the Mannix Library at CTC, just pay attention to the filters over to the side, these um, facets, and just click on Mannix Library and it will show you purely what we have in our collection at Mannix. Um, and then obviously also down the side there's, you can, you can select it as just a book or if you want it to be an article, um, what year range you'd like it to be in. Um, yeah, and then also, what about, oh yeah. So if you're wanting to sort of see where the book's located in the collection, this will be the call number, the good old Dewey Decimal System for all my library nerds out there. Um, so this will tell you where the book is and if it's in the main collection or if it's on the reserve shelf. Um, yeah, so, but otherwise, if you need help finding it, just come and talk to one of us, we don't bite. Um, and yeah, we'll help you, we'll help you find uh, where your book is at. Another thing I'll point out that is a really handy tool is the course reserves button. So you can access this uh, either on the homepage of the Library Hub or if you're in the catalog bit just here. Um, if you click on that, it will take you to um, a list of all the units that are being offered um, 
in during the semester and it will be a collection of the, the books that have been put on reserve to um, be read or what you're reading during the semester. So you can just sort of write in your unit number or your lecturer and it will come up and it will give you a list. And so if there's any ebooks that are listed there, it will be indicated with a with a red button that says view ebook. Otherwise, you can just jot down the call number and pop in and have a read. It'll be on a reserve shelf and there might be a second copy or a third or fourth copy there for you to borrow if if need be. Um, and if you click on an ebook button, which I've realized there's no ebook button there for you to look at, um, it will be you'll be prompted to log into the library hub. So as Jude said before, there is only one login for the library hub, which will be your email address, which is your ARC email and password, um, as, as you know now. Um, however, not to confuse you, but if you'd like to um, use uh, the, the library as a, like if you want to save lists or save um, bibliographies or place holds on books, you can also sign in to your library account. So there's a distinction. There's a, your library login to access online resources. And there's your sign in to just sort of renew books, save searches and place items on hold. Um, but this is something that you create yourself and it'll be in the top right corner of the um, catalog. So that one, it'll be your student number. It'll ask for your barcode, that is your student number click the set and reset password and then it will send you an email to get that account created. So it's a useful tool if you want to place items on hold. Otherwise, again, you can come in or you could call us or email us and we'll be happy to do that for you too. So uh, I've gone to the library hub. So yes, anything that if you've forgotten already, because I understand that this is a bit of a day, we're at eight o'clock now. So um, yeah, if you're wanting to learn how to use the library hub properly, all the information is listed um, here. As for our hours, we also have another website, which is just manix.org.au, which is purely the Manix library website. So our hours are listed there. Our staff emails are listed there. Um, so you can pick who you want to talk to. There's four of us at the library. Um, and yeah, so you can come in Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're open nine to seven. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, it's nine till five. And Saturdays when classes are running, we're open 10 till three. So just make sure classes are running if you're wanting to pop in on the weekend. Um, but yeah, you can access this via the Manix uh, library website. And also we'll have the hours outside the building. Outside the building, outside the doors. You'll see them, they'll be around. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I need to tell you guys. If you're wanting to follow us on Facebook, because sometimes we have book sales, they're very fun to get to. First in best dress, really, if you want to grab a, grab a quid um, sale. Um, I'll be letting you know on Facebook. If you want to send us an email, our email address is there, or give us a call. And yeah, we'll be sending out an email probably next week, uh, start of next week, which will be giving you a little bit of information about, um, you know, orientations that will be running in the library just to get your head around the library um and yeah i think i think that's all i think that's all there is to say so i'll stop sharing there so hopefully that wasn't too much but back to you john <laughs> oh, that wasn't too much it's great thank you very much annalise um we've got a student presenter um to give us a student perspective um, jessica parsons is with us um, she's mentioned that her internet's been uh, up and down a bit during this pr presentation, but she's going to give it a shot anyway. So I'll hand you over to Jessica and uh, hopefully we'll get through it. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, John. Um, well, hello, everyone. Um, it's very nice to see faces again and, you know, um, gearing up to start another semester. That's always very exciting. Um, well, so John asked me to just talk about some of my experiences and, and what it's been like to study at CTC and um, obviously it's been wonderful. <laughs> um, I'm doing a, I started out doing a diploma of theology, but that got switched over to a bachelor last year. 
So um, now I'm doing a Bachelor of Theology and I'm um, making my way through that very, very slowly. I'm just doing one unit a semester because um, I have uh, family commitments. Um, so, uh, so it's really been a fantastic experience um, for me. Uh, I hadn't done any university study when I came here, so I was very, very nervous about things like, you know, essays and also reading, um, you know, sort of very serious Bible commentaries and things that I'd never been exposed to. Um, and also sort of learning to think about uh, the faith in a um, in a very directed way as opposed to a sort of, uh, you know, um, emotional way. Um, so learning to understand what the church teaches and, and what the Gospels teach, um, learning to understand that through the, the guidance of, you know, very clever scholars and... Um, and theologians and people who've been doing this sort of business for, for decades. So that was all very new to me and it was actually very difficult to sort of get into the swing of um, academic language and uh, exegetical thinking. I, I think I'd done like three units before I really figured out what an exegetical essay was. So uh, <laughs> that was difficult. Um, uh, it, it's been... Um, it's been a fantastic experience. I think someone was saying before that, you know, it's not such a, it's not one of these sort of great big universities where, you know, you're just kind of, um, uh, you know, you're just a sort of in a sea of students. Um, it has been a very uh, personal approach, I think. You know, the lecturers are very engaged. Um, they're very approachable. Um, and... I've always found that I, I've been able to sort of, you know, reach out and, and say, look, I'm, I'm really not getting this or, you know, I, I'm really struggling with this essay question or, you know, I've always felt that uh, I can really approach people, you know, um, and, and that's, and, you know, that's been fantastic. Um, I, uh, the, 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 the biggest thing I think, the, the greatest skill I suppose I've learned is writing. Um, I had a little bit of writing experience before I came in, but nothing as sort of rigorous as academic writing. And, um, and uh, what I really learned about um, looking at the Gospels and, and also um, theology in in you know, in, in an academic way is that you really are sort of um, being directed to look at things very closely and you learn to really channel your thinking um, and, and really, um, really question your thinking. Actually, that's a good way of, of me seeing it is that you, your, your, your response to the text is really questioned and really challenged and, and really uh, put to the test when you're writing an essay. Um, essays were my big fear and uh, now they're my great love <laughs> because actually what I discovered about writing essays in the theology and of course I've never written an essay in anything else so I wouldn't really have anything to compare to but but what I realized with every essay I wrote was that um, you know when you're writing an essay on the bible every sort of essay really I suppose for me has become a search for Christ and that that is who is at the center of your studies and theology and 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 um and the bible because because that's why we're here so uh that goal makes it a lot less frightening and um and uh you know the 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 great skill that i've learned is really the sort of organizing being super organized being super methodical um planning 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 um just really sort of uh making sure that i'm i'm very sort of organized in my materials organized in my notes organized in my thinking and just trying constantly to just uh 
you know, you keep your eye on the prize, which is your deepening of faith. Um, and, and any sort of anxieties that come up in studying, you can always get back to that. I don't know if I'm rambling, but, um, but I guess I just want to say to like, you know, new students coming in that, um, and I don't know if people have studied at other universities or whatever, but what I've found about studying at CTC and, and studying theology and, and uh, you know, the Gospels and so forth is that um, everyone here wants you to do well because everyone wants you to become closer to God. And that's the main point, really, is faith. Um, and that has really served me, that sort of thinking, and not getting too hung up on, you know, results and grades and marks and and um, that sort of thing. Just just tackling things, you know, honestly, um, sincerely, boldly, um, and being meticulous and, and trying to write well because, you know, you have to sort of... Um, you have to think of your lecturer. So, you know, they're, they're reading all of these essays all the time. So you want to make sure that they enjoy reading your work. So, so it's important to strive with writing. It's important to try really hard to write well. Um, and the, the trick I've learned with writing is that uh, good writing is rewriting. And so um, one of the things I've learned to do is to write, you know, lots and lots of drafts. Um, and, and that's been a wonderful thing. Um, the other thing I found really frightening was the library. I sort of, even though, you know, um, uh, you know, again, the staff are really, really lovely, um, but still uh, I've, I've found looking things up and trying to find books quite daunting in many ways. Um, and so the trick is just to keep asking because you know, you just ask questions, you just ask people for help because I've, I've never met anyone at CTC who's gotten huffy about me asking for help. So people are very welcoming. People want to help. People want you to do well. And, um, and I've certainly had that experience studying at CTC. Um, yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's been a wonderful thing. And, and as a student, the thing that I would say most of all is... Um, for me, the, the point has been a deepening of faith and every essay is an attempt to draw closer to faith. Um, and and that's, that's really the essence for me, I suppose, is um, continuing that search. So I'm not sure what else I should say, but I hope that's enough. <laughs> Thanks. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, um, Jessica, and um, your microphone was fine. We heard that all terrifically, so well done. Um, uh, we're at 8.25, which is uh, 10 minutes over time. Um, a couple of your questions in the chats got answered. Uh, anybody else have any more questions? Just jump in if you, if you do. Tom, there was a question about in the chats about library. Perhaps you or Annalise could answer that when the library's um, open over weekend. Yeah, yes, probably it, it did come up in, in Annalise's talk, but um, the library is open on Saturdays on the days when there are classes. Now that's that's subject subject to change at the moment because there are some classes which have been scheduled, but we don't know whether there are going to be enough people in them for them to actually run. So if you're planning to go to in, into the library on the Saturday, best to um, have a look at the library website or give them a call um, before you before you go in. Would that be right, Annalise? Yep. Yeah. Probably the okay. best. Yeah. Probably the best idea. Yep. Um, there was also a question about where where do I get my student ID? Because some of you, again, because we haven't keyed all the enrolments yet some people haven't got their IDs but you'll get them as soon as we've keyed your enrollment and we send you um, a welcome letter that has um, a, a, your details generated out of the system on it. Okay so uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll sign off now thank you so much for, uh, for, for coming in it's good to see such a good turnout 
Um, and uh, I hope you got uh, a lot of information out of it. Um, Kevin showed you the website where you'll be able to contact us if you do have any questions. Uh, and from all of us at Catholic Theological College, have a lovely night and we look forward to seeing you in class. See ya. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks, John. Good on you. Thank you. Cheers.